Religious scripture study with me, Karen B. Of course, and your, and of course, just Jack. (laughs) 
Flat Earth. <laughs> Flat Earth. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> All right. Oh, let's get in it. Um, today is going to be an interesting subject. Um, we were talking last week about uh, the beating of Balaam's ass, which was very interesting. And um, we'll we'll get into that in the review in a second. But uh, I'm going to I had some enjoyment and some frustration in translating this chapter because a lot of words popped up that have not been previously translated um, that were it seems like translated all willy nilly, you know, for the sake of them uh, filling in blanks or whatever, what we'll get into that, but um, I'll read my disclaimer, just Jack's disclaimer to the religious. If you believe it's wrong to study the scripture outside of your religion or denomination, if you believe your religious leaders or church fathers are incapable of having inherited anti-scriptural traditions of men, if you've already made up your mind about scripture, including the scripture shouldn't be studied at all, then this stream is not for you. To others, if you are open-minded to others' opinions, if you haven't made up your mind about Scripture, if you've been turned off to religion but believe there's truth in Scripture that may have been changed or hidden by religion, if you live according to Scripture and like to dig in and discover more, then this stream is for you. We are looking at Scripture in the original language using concordances or dictionaries for root words, as well as context from a non-religion perspective. We will as well have life experience discussion. We are not here to argue with others about theology or doctrine by the traditions of men, including Catholicism, Christianity, or Judaism. We will be discussing the importance of origins and show how religions contradict the scriptures. There we go. All right. So I'll go back to last week's really quickly, chapter 22. Um, so there's this conversation uh, going on with uh, Balak, which is uh, Balak, which is um, a king, uh, son of Sippor. And he's the king of the Moabites. And he was told to get a hold of Balaam. Uh, Balim is actually, I think, it, hold on, let me double check here if the pronunciation is uh, Bilam, not Balim. Bilam. So he went to Bilam and trying to convince him to come and curse uh, Yisrael because Yisrael is in the direct vicinity of him. And basically, every time Israel tried to cross through anybody's territory, they're like, we want to cross through peaceful. We don't want any of your stuff. Just let us pass through, and we're just going to walk on by. And the people are like, uh, no, we're going to go to war. And every time that they go to war with Israel, they get you know pretty much wiped out. And so the Moabite king was concerned that he was going to get wiped out as well. So he contacted Balaam, said, curse Israel. And um, Bilam tried to conversate with Yah about it. And basically, like it says, as Yah speaks to me, um, I was told that he was a, like a witch, um, you know, someone who did evil things with spirituality. I mean, it says like fees of divination, you know, stuff like that. Um, so I was told that he was just an evil dude, that he was trying to, uh, curse Israel, but he actually was a prophet that communicated with Yah and Yah told him, well, if they return, then you can go with them and then just speak the words that I tell you to speak. And instead of waiting for them to, uh, leave and return, he went with them that day, which was against, uh, Yah's command because he wanted the stature. He wanted the the um, yeah the stature is i guess i guess the best word <laughs> to be like you know high in the court of the king and so he attempted to go and his donkey like stopped on him and his donkey like smashed his leg into the wall and you know balaam was about to beat his ass and then uh <laughs> the the says uh the angel of the lord in uh king james version but it's actually uh messenger jehovah and it says that he was a satan to him uh so if i can find that really quick ta -ta -ta -ta.
yeah, the donkey says I never did any, did you any wrong. You know, why why would you beat me now? Mm-hmm. And so verse uh, 32 says, I to withstand thee. It's King James Version, but it says it's to Satan, to Satan thee. So this um this goes with the whole thing of like Satan being um personalized when it literally means anything that's opposed. So like if we were at war, uh you would be a Satan to me, I would be a Satan to you. And in the case when you're a you as an individual is opposing to Yah's will, you're being a Satan to Yah's will. So it's not a um invisible bad guy with horns and pitchfork and yada yada yada. So um he said, okay, well, you know, I was going to wipe you out because you're not listening to me, but if you go there and only speak the words that I tell you to speak, then I'll let you go on. And now we're at uh, chapter 23 when he's appearing before the king. So that's where we're at. Okay. <laughs> Someone come in here saying this is Jewish. No, it's not, dude. <laughs> Definitely not. Um I, I'm every religion you can name. I'm anti-religion. So just to let you know, that's why we um, call it anti-religious scripture. Yeah. Study. And, and the thing is, is that in the case of Judaism, they have this uh, tradition or to them, it's more like a law that you have to read the Talmud before you read the scriptures so that they can pre interpret it for you. So that if it says something other than what they want you to believe, you have to take the rabbi's word for it, et cetera, et cetera. All right. All right. Whenever you're ready. Okay. And Bilam said to Balak, build seven slaughter places for me here and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me here. Okay. So, you know, in the case of seven, seven is, uh, you know, he's trying to make an oath, mm-hmm. um, you know, a, a deal with uh, the creator here. Okay. And Balak did as Bilam had spoken, and Balak and Bilam offered a bull and a ram on each slaughter place. Okay. Or altar. Yes. Altar is a better translation. Because sometimes it's a grain altar. So, yeah. (laughs) Bilam then said to Balak, Stand by your ascending offering and let me go on. It might be that Yehovah does come to meet me, and whatever he shows me, I shall declare to you. And he went to bear a height. He went to a bear height. A bear height. He went to a bear height. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm going to see when... I'm going to see if I can figure out why they translated it this way. Mm. I mean I get height. You know, uh, it's translated as high place, but, you know, it's it's of a, like when the snake raises up high to strike, mm-hmm. that's the high place. So, I don't know where bear height went to, but I, I don't know how they translated it that way. I wouldn't have. <laughs> no clue. Hmm. And Elohim came to Bilam, and he said to him, I have prepared the seven slaughter places and I have offered on each slaughter place a bull and a ram. Elohim came to Bilam. And and Bilam said to him. Right. Bilam said to him. Right. Okay. Yep. And Yehovah put a word in the mouth of Bilam and said, return to Balak and this is what you say. Okay. So a word in the mouth. Right. So this is prophecy. Okay. So Yehovah is having Bilam prophesy to Balak. So that he was a prophet of Yah. So that that's that's good to know because um I was not taught that in churchianity. I, I was taught he was a, a bad guy. Nothing to do with Yah. And he returned to him and saw him standing by his ascending offering, he and all heads of Moab. Is this uh, Sar? Yeah, Sar. So, princess or head turner. And he took up his proverb and said, Balak, the sovereign of Moab, has brought me from Aram, 
from the mountains of the east. Come curse Yaakov for me, and come rage at Yisrael. All right, so Balak the Sovereign has brought me from a realm saying, curse Yaakov. So he's talking about, you know, the reason that he's there in the first place. And he's now telling this into the whole assembly so that they all hear what happened. Mm -hmm. How do I curse whom El has not cursed? And how do I rage at whom Yehovah has not raged? All right. For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I observe him. Look, a people dwelling alone, not reckoning itself among the nations. Okay, so... Not reckoning. Reckoning is think, design, or invent. So they're not... um, You know, they're not designing themselves amongst the nations. They're not being like the rest of the nations is what it's talking about here. Mm -hmm. And it's also talking about this is Yisrael we're talking about here. And these people, um, not people, duh, 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 duh. anyways, the, this nation is the Goyim. So they, they are a Goyim amongst Goyim, but they're not being like the rest of the Goyim. So this whole thing about, you know, the modern uh, interpretation of Goy is nonsense. It just means a group of people together. So a nation. Uh, yeah, a nation. Right. Exactly. And a people dwelling alone. Okay. So it just says a separate dwelling. So this is also a part, uh, a way of reckoning set apartness, AKA holiness. Cause they're set apart. They're dwelling separate. Because okay. holy doesn't mean, um, you know, better than you or more righteous than you. It just means set apart. Mm -hmm. All right, verse 10. Who shall count the dust of Yaakov and the number of one-fourth of Yisrael? Let me die the death of the upright and let my end be like his. Okay. And Balak said to Bilam, what have you done to me? I took you to a to curse my enemies and look you have kept on blessing <laughs> i mean he can only do what he's told to do mm -hmm. at this point right so mm -hmm. he's saying that you know i hired you to come out here and curse israel and instead you're blessing them saying they're numerous and you know they're righteous and you know i hope to die in their righteousness you know mm -hmm. verse 12 and he answered and said should I not take heed to speak what Yehovah has put in my mouth? And um, action to guard the word. So guard is um, that word translated often as keep. Mm -hmm. um, but it's to, to protect, to make sure that, you know, nobody messes with it. Uh, this just says put, but it's definitely more than that, you know, to mm -hmm. to guard what was put into his mouth. Um, oh, actually, it's not. It's take heed. Take heed is the shamar. Hmm. Take heed. My bad. So, hmm. yeah, that messes me up because, you know, Hebrew order of words, and then they flip them to be more um, <laughs> grammarly appropriate for English. So the take heed is the word that was translated from shamar to guard. Uh, speak is word. Yeah, to guard the word. Okay. 13. And Balak said to him, Please come with me to another place from where you see them. You only see the extremity, but not all of them. Curse them for me from there. All right. So maybe you can only, like, maybe you're blessing them because you can only see part of Israel, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, let's get the full picture of Israel. Let's get higher up and look <laughs> down at them and then and then curse them. Mm -hmm. And of course, curse is the same word as a uh, uh, blaspheme or piercing. So 14. And he took him to the field of Sophim to the top of Pisgah and built seven slaughter places and offered a bull and a ram on each slaughter place. 
All right, so another, you know, attempt at add an oath. Seven altars. All right. And he said to Balak, stand here by your ascending offering while I meet over there. Okay. And Yehovah came to Bilam and put a word oh, in... Sorry. sorry, my... Yeah, I scrolled too fast. Sorry about that. Oh. Go ahead. And Yehovah came to Bilam and put a word in his mouth and said, go back to Balak and say this. Yeah, and again, this is... Whenever it talks about the word of the mouth, this is Devar. So this is an ordered word, not just speak. All right, 17. So he went to him and saw him standing by his ascending offering and the heads of Moab with him. And Balak asked him, what did Yehovah say? And you he, sure you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> and he, All right, go ahead. And he took up his proverb and said, rise up, Balak, and hear, listen to me, son of Sippor. Yeah, I find it interesting that it says proverb, or in over here it's parable, right? Mm-hmm. Like he's just speaking the word that um, that Jehovah is telling him to speak, right? Mm-hmm. And this one translated at proverb, this one parable, and it's actually the rule. So mm-hmm. you know when you're making a rule, mm-hmm. um, you know like a it's it's like a commandment, only it's more. Uh, logistics, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Like we talked about this earlier where I think it was Abraham. It says that he was um, obedient to the Torah, to the to the rule, and to the um, instructions. Like there, there was three different words that meant basically the same thing, but they're all distinctly different, right? So I don't know why they would say proverb or parable, because it's not like he's telling a story to mean something else. He's telling him directly, right? Mm-hmm. But then in this place, it gets kind of um, uh, comparative. So, which uh, is going to be the inter- interesting verse that I was talking to you about before we started. So oh. that's coming up. <laughs> okay. L is not a man to lie nor a son of man to repent. Has he said, and would he not do it, or spoken, and would not confirm it? Right. See, so I, I, this, is, this is something that um, some people m- may have heard from Christians that never went to church, that, you know, God mm-hmm. is not a man that he should lie, right? Mm-hmm. That's something that goes around in circles. Um, but mm-hmm. They lie, religions lie on him by taking things out of scripture, out of context and saying, God said this, Mm -hmm. that happens way, way, way too often. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, obviously God doesn't lie. So this verse that I took out of context is exactly what I say it is, you know? Right. So be careful, be careful of that statement. All right. Verse 20. See, I have received to bless and he has blessed and I do not reverse it. Okay. Okay. He has looked upon wickedness in Yaakov, or he has not looked upon wickedness in Yaakov, nor has he seen trouble in Yisrael. Yehovah, his Elohim, is with him, and the shout of a sovereign is in him. All right, so, Vaughn. Where is this? Produce. Sorry, I'm trying to look at this word that's translated as wickedness or or iniquity. Oh, did it get changed? To, no, that's... I'm utterly confused at this point. <laughs> Nor beheld... Negative labor... Avon. Yeah. Like. Negative. The Amal is the negative labor. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how, but I think this word is actually missing from my translation. Um, Mm -hmm. The production. He hasn't beheld the production in Yaakov and the negative uh, seeing labor in Yisrael. So I want to, again, you know, this is just Jack, 
I wouldn't have translated it that way. Um, because they say wickedness, and wickedness is not here. Lack of production. That's that's the way... Yeah, that's how I would translate it. He doesn't he doesn't recognize that Yaakov hasn't produced much. Right? It has nothing to do with iniquity. I don't know why they translated it that way. I, it's very confusing to me. But this whole um area that they call a proverb, right? Or that they call a a parable, right? A parable or a proverb. I don't think it is. I think that it's the way they translate it that makes it seem as a parable or a proverb, which we're going to see. Uh, go ahead with verse 22. El, who brought them out of Mitzrayim, is for them like the horns of a wild ox. And what does it say in King James Version? Uh... God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. There we go. <laughs> All right. So we have we have the horns of an ox or the strength of a unicorn. All right. Mm -hmm. But if you go to that word for translated as strength here or horns there, none of them are strength or horns. There is a, it's actually the root of, you know, animals that fly or wings, right? The flyers or the wings. Mm -hmm. And then by extension, um, eyelid being the, the long, uh, off, off, which is wing, wing. Uh, it's like your eyelids because it's the wing, wing on your eyes. Okay. And then it gets into fatigue as in the closing of the eyelids, and then the opposite, which is strength. And in this case, it's neither. Uh, so it literally breaks down as like as they do wing of lift. Okay, so if we go to this word that was translated to unicorn, it's lift or height, right, to be lifted. And then... It says right here that in this specific instance, even though it's the same words as here, they say it's an unknown animal, possibly from its height, translated as unicorn. And then if you look up these verses that gets translated this way, you're like, um, I don't know why they would translate it as unicorn or any animal in a lot of these incidences. It's just where they're making it a parable where I don't see that there needs to be. Because when they were singing the song uh, about Jehovah taking them out of uh, uh, Mitzrayim, they were talking about being lifted on wings. And then when Jehovah says, you've been uh, lifted on wings like eagles, right? Mm -hmm. There, There's that parallel that often shows up about him bringing them out of Mitzrayim. So I don't know why they want to just translated it uh, like like they do wing of lift, right? Or some English form of that, that they were lifted on the wing on the wings to them, mm -hmm. right? That makes a lot more sense. And again, this is just Jack's opinion. And do your own research on these two words right here because it's not the only time that it shows up this way, where these two Hebrew words are back to back. And they translate it as strength of a unicorn or horns of an ox, depending on which version you're looking at, well, where it could literally weird. just be translated on the wings of lift. It's weird that they would even use unicorn because that's one horn. Right. And all yeah, and, ox and, have two. <laughs> like, yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Well, well that's the thing is like, uh, it's not even, there's not even a mention of a horn here. And I always thought that like, when I was growing up, I heard, Oh, maybe it wasn't a unicorn. Maybe it was a rhino or something like that. I've heard, you know, different stories about it. I've heard people say it's it. referring to rhino too. Yeah. And the thing is, is there's no mention of a horn <laughs> at all. It's just, I, I don't understand why they, well, 
we don't like this word that was translated to unicorn, so we're going to compare it to something we know, like an ox or like a rhino or whatever. When the the fact of the matter is, is there's no proof of this being an animal at all. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing in this context that make you. It just believe... says exact meaning is unknown. Exact meaning not known. Probably great yeah. aurochs or wild bulls, which are now extinct. Exact meaning is not known. Yeah, so there's are, really no modern word. Are you looking at, at the Strong's version? Yeah, but I was one? looking in the definitions. That's what yeah. it says under Brown Driver Briggs. Yeah, yeah. And and this one, uh, Strong says, a wild bull from its conspicuousness or unicorn. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? And then if you look at the root, it says from, right? It always tells you what root they did. De- they decided to translate from Mm -hmm. and the root it says it right here in the king james in the strong's version sorry to rise to be lifted up Mm -hmm. so what does it have to do with an animal at all like it's just yeah this is this is the this is why we go through the scriptures like this because it's like where do they even get this information from where are they even rooting this because every time you if you look this up because i can do this right now i can go Oh, I have to change the version. Hold on one second. Sorry. Do do do. Unicorn. Right click. Search. Old Testament. It only shows up nine times. Uh, can you see the listing of the verses that I just searched mm-hmm. that I'm dragging? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. I don't know how it works with the share screen. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. So, making sure. Okay, so here again we have the the strength of a unicorn, right? So it's that H four four three. This is the verse that we're working on right now. H443 and 7214. And then we have the same thing right here for numbers 24, 8, which is going to be in the next chapter. Uh, so look forward to it coming again. And then this one here uh, talks about a horn, but it could be the horns lifting. And the these horns, um, in the context, it says the first sling of this bullock, his glory and his horns, so it's the horns of what? A bullock. Lifted the horns of the people. So it ha- it, it's lifted. Why unicorns? Unicorns doesn't even work here. Okay. And then Job has one, which I'm not going to get into that. Or Job has two. And then you get Psalms, where Psalms are, is uh, they're poetic, you know, blah, blah, blah. Where it says, uh, the mouth of the lion... And the horn of the unicorn, you have heard. (laughs) Okay, so, um, or the horn lifted, you have heard, Mm -hmm. right? Which still makes sense. You know, when you blow a shofar, when you blow a horn, you lift it up and you blow it. It, it's, It's just, it goes on and on like that, so... Um, Zulu says, yeah, why I, can't it be a unicorn? Well, you know, when I was little, I loved unicorns and I really wanted unicorns <laughs> to be real. I just don't think they are. I'm not, <laughs> let, let me, let me put it this, let me, let me put it to you this way. All right. Hmm. If there are unicorns, this verse doesn't have anything to do with it <laughs> for or against. That's my point is like. If you want this word to be translated as unicorn because there must be unicorns, that's a very bad argument. It's very bad. Let's say there are unicorns. Like, 100% there's unicorns, but this word is not unicorn. <laughs> the end. The end. It's literally lift. It literally is the definition lift. Yeah, it's weird. Or or elevate, to lift up, to, like, you know, it says right here, to rise, to be lifted up. Or it says right here, lift, height. Right? Mm-hmm. All right. So, I had to get, I, I, I knew that there was going to be some kind of spiral. Like, how come you, you can say that it's translated a different way? I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm saying this is my opinion. Look it up for yourself and see how they even got there in the first place. It does seem weird, though. Sometimes you're like, mm-hmm. well, they really kind of extrapolated, made a big extrapolation there. Yep. You know. Like, that is a giant leap of logic. If you say the word lift, then it's unicorn. <laughs> right. And then right? if they do it one place, then they're then they're kind of justified in doing it in other places, which can then exactly. start changing the complete meaning of everything. Exactly. Yep, that's my point. And, again, don't 
take my word for it. If you want to believe it's strength of a unicorn, or if you and and if that's the case, then you should be super mad at these people for translating it as horns of a wild ox. And you can be annoyed with me for translating it as it's literally saying, uh, like they do wing of lift to them. So, you know, it's up to you, but you know, I do my due diligence. I try to find the logic of them translating something a certain way. And, you know, if, if, if you haven't listened to the first chapter that we did, please do, because I make my own leaps of logic based on the repetitive nature of the root of the word, uh, not based on my own belief system. So, and that changes things. So we're in verse 23 and we're still in a quote unquote proverb, which is not <laughs> proverb. Right. Right. Let's, let's go back to that. Just to, you know, nail that home. So this is not proverb. This is a rule. He's giving a rule of order. Right. And then he spoke to the rise of Balak to hear and obey. Uh, they do hear witness again, the sons of support. So it's not a proverb. It's, this is the same word that's used many, many times for, um, let me see if I can, verse 18, HSBR, parable, So they chose it in 38 places to see the parable. And most of it is in this context of Balak and Balaam. 24, 24. So this is the two from the ruling. Also the prophecy. Yeah. So if you look at the root of the word, that's how you can find the definition of a word to roll or to have dominion. So, all right, go back to the parallel and back to verse 24, I believe. Mm. Well, 23, right, we haven't actually read 23 yet. Oh, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> For there is no sorcery against Yaakov, nor is there any divination against Yisrael. Now it is said to Yaakov and to Israel, what has El done? Okay, so now we have uh, no divining, all right? But this is the Nachash, that serpent from uh, Exodus chapter 3. There's no Nachash against Yaakov. Well, obviously, we're not talking about the serpent from um, Exodus, you know, I mean, from Genesis, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, but this is Nachash. It's the same exact word, so... And it's translated as sorcery or enchantment in King James Version. All right, 24. Look, a people rises like a lioness and lifts itself up like a lion. It lies not down until it devours the prey and drinks the blood of the slain. All right. And Balak said to Bilam, do not curse them at all, nor bless them at all. He's like... You, you're doing the opposite of what I want you to do. It's better that you don't do anything at all, <laughs> right? Uh <-huh. laughs> Stop blessing them, <laughs> all right? Okay, I, 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 I call off, okay? I'm not going to curse them anymore, but stop blessing them. You know, that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And Bilam answered and said to Balak, Have I not spoken to you, saying all that Yehovah speaks that I do? And in other words, it's not me. Mm -hmm. It's Yehovah, all right? And Balak said to Bilam, Please come, let me take you to another place. It might be right in the eyes of Elohim that you curse them for me from there. <laughs> so he just keeps going to different locations like, how about over here? Yeah, exactly. How about over maybe, here? <laughs> maybe this is the holy place. Maybe this is the holy place. Maybe this is the holy place. Right? Uh -huh. And and that's that's sign telling for, for other situations as well. You know, mm -hmm. it's holy. It's holy where Yah is, period. It doesn't matter how many big buildings you build or the highest mountain that you build the building on or mm -hmm. anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Yaswell is Yaswell. Okay. Mm -hmm. 28. And Balak took Bilam to the top of Peor and overlooks the wasteland. Okay. So this is uh, Peor, which is called the, the great opening or the wide opening. 
there is a deity that they call Baal Peor, the Lord of the Wide Opening, and they stick their bum on the the statue's nose. Okay, because <laughs> it's bum worship, the Lord of the Wide Opening. Mm-hmm. It's disgusting. Uh... Anyway, so now we're at this very holy place of Baal Peor, <laughs> right? <laughs> That overlooks the wasteland. All right, 29. And Bilam said to Balak, Build seven slaughter places for me here, and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me here. Okay. And Balak did as Bilam had said, and offered a bull and a ram on each slaughter place. Well, I'm not going to give any spoilers of what happens in the next chapter, but I'm guessing it doesn't work. But <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Um. again... I, I tell people all the time, you know, don't take my word for it in the way that I translate things, you know, look it up for yourself. And obviously I can make mistakes because somehow um, I accidentally deleted a word or it's on the wrong color or something that it didn't show up, which I'm going to watch this video and try to find it so I can fix it. Um, but yeah, it is gross. Yeah, there's a lot of um Does it get into weird... that in the next couple chapters cuz I'm seeing that it talks about b- ball worship. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, stuff. Yep. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, the next couple chapters look like they should be interesting too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um <clears throat> the the reason I do what I do is because I read I wa- I I thought I knew what the Bible said as a Christian, right? And then I decided to read the book for myself and it changed my whole belief system. And then I was like, okay, I'm looking at these different translations and they're all, you know, they're all different on this one verse or they're all different on this verse. And then when I look up the root of the words, I'm like, well, this one seems like it's closer, but this one seems like they have their own agenda and the way they're translating things. So then I taught myself how to read and define Hebrew myself, how to you know, research the root words and find the parallel between the root word and the translated word and so on. So if you don't like the way that I do things, that's fine. You know, read your own version or, you know, investigate it for yourself. That's even a better way to do it. But if you put multiple translations next to each other and you see a very clear distinction that there's two different translations, I encourage you to go back to the original language and see what it it actually says. It'll It'll help you just by doing that first step, you know, to mm-hmm. compare translations. Um, I'm going to go through the chat real quick here. TC Zaman, Shabbat Shalom, uh, Mariah Jordan, or Maria is the way. Never mind. Um, FE Nation, Lincoln Sharp, Zulu, uh, JB Rance, Captain Construction. Aisling 717, Spicy Sarah. What's up, folks? Um, NDB. F- oh, I think I already said FE Nation, but that's all right. Alex Javier. Melissa. Excuse me one second. I got to clear my throat. MS. No longer on the ball. Mr. Miyagi. Uh, da, 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 da. His ass kicked his ass, yes, and and that's fine to be shown because that's 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 what it is. Uh, <laughs> all right, um, where was I at? Sorry. Do do do. <laughs> all right, M S, Ali B Tree Dude. Um, Carolyn. Exposing Ma's tricks. They got next. Some Russian word. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know how to read Russian. Valley Parks. And Dave Messenger. All right. Cool. I think I made it through that all. <laughs> uh, but I did see something... I think I saw a question, so I'm going to yeah. look there. See if there's any questions you could put them in chat. We'll try to answer Rather than Rather than complaints about how Jewish we are. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yeah, <sighs> Jewish. 
Jewish is like not. Yeah. Mr. Miyagi says um, Jewish. What about the other tribes? Yeah. So that's a weird thing because the people who call themselves Jewish today are not, they're not claiming to be from the tribe of Judah. They're claiming from the, the practicers of Judaism, which is different than scripture. And I think, yeah. So MS says, isn't this based on the Torah as far as what, um, this, this study, because this study is based on the Torah and not on the translation of the Torah, but the actual Torah, which is before, you know, um, and I, as I was reading, as I was explaining before, they read the Talmud before the Torah to explain how the Torah should be read. Um, yeah, we're just doing it without all those filters. Quran is the last true book. Yeah, we've had a discussion about that in, in previous episodes. Um, you know, the Torah is rewritten. Oh, okay. That's, that's an opinion. I, I don't necessarily believe that I've investigated this for a while. I don't see it that way. I believe it's been rewritten as in it's been copied and copied and copied and copied. Like this is not like the Torah that Moshe wrote in it and we pulled it out of a box and there it is. (laughs) I definitely don't believe that. Um, Torah being the first five books of the Bible. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, the, the Bible's rewritten by human. Yeah. And Torah, also the Quran, not. Oh, okay. Anyway. Uh, Karen, he's asking you if you've read the Quran yet. Okay. Anyway. Mm, no, not yet. One at a time. Do I do plan on reading it, though. <laughs> say it again i said i do plan on reading it though but i'm just trying to read i want to read through the bible first and then i'll go through the quran you know i just i don't want to just read it and then like not actually absorb the information that's why i'm taking yeah. my time i want to actually absorb yeah. the information you know agreed agreed all right so do you think that Bilam making altars to sacrifice or give offerings to yah when he's not a priest is an example of how we are able to do the same um i mean i would go at, uh, there's an easier path than that just look at abraham everywhere he went he built an altar and made a sacrifice so yeah um i don't think that you need to be a quote-unquote priest to uh build an altar but there there is the condition of the um atonement and um uh what do you call it the you know, it's translated as sin offering, but the distance offering and the atonement, uh, it says specifically that has to be done in a specific place by a specific family. So that we cannot do. But love offerings, peace offerings, gift offerings, uh, the the firstborn dedicated of the flock, you know, stuff like that. Um, I don't see I don't see anywhere where it is forbidden or done away with, quote unquote. Uh, we Muslims recognize all prophets. The Bible doesn't, and Torah also, and the Talmud is evil. Um, you're you're not saying anything that I'm not saying. I completely agree that the Talmud is evil. It has nothing to do with the Torah. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. The religion's all the same, but they corrupted. Yeah, this guy's like trying to take over chat here. So, um, there's a lot of quotes by him. Read through the chat yourself if you want to see what he wrote. Um, why can't it be a unicorn always follows their agenda? (laughs) It it can't be a unicorn because it's not a unicorn. That's, that's all not saying that unicorns don't exist. I wouldn't make that claim. That's not, that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, but yeah, brown nosing their fake deities. Yes. Yeah. Brown nosing. Think about that. That's pretty strange that we have that, uh, that statement these days, you know? brown nosing uh uh yeah but yeah that's uh but i'll pay or it's funny it's funny how many things have biblical origins (laughs) yes yeah it's very strange when you see the origin of things for sure like uh look up the actual origins of christmas and easter and uh you know it's bad anyways when I was in church unity, he would tell the pastor or others that I read a certain passage and they said that you should double check what the 
senior or associate pastor, associate pastor to be sure. Yeah, you. How dare you uh, read the book for yourself without interpretation from a spiritual leader? Um, sarcastically speaking, there's philosophy when it comes to answering something that challenges worldviews or taught from uh, cemeteries, aka seminaries. Yep. All right. Cool. Yeah, and I don't think there's anything wrong um, with looking at other uh, religious texts, but you know, I'm I'm looking at the the base root, the base scripture that the other scriptures were written after the fact. So, you know, I don't see anything wrong with that. It's like, for instance, you know, I spent my whole life in churchianity and we did a lot of studying of the New Testament. And then, you know, now that I'm studying the Torah, people are like, why aren't you doing a bunch of studies on the New Testament? Well, I was raised in that. That That's like all over in my brain. But I can't understand the New Testament without understanding where it came from, which is the Old Testament, which does not get taught very much in church. Mm -hmm. So that's what led me down this path. And then when I read the New Testament, it changes things like a lot because all the BS that was taught to me in churchianity does not line up with the rest of scripture. So. All righty. Um, so. Yeah, this is this is an interesting uh, segue off of, you know, them traveling through the desert and then them having to deal with kings that are, are like not letting them travel. And so they get wiped out. And then these the kings that know what's been going on, they're like trying to prepare themselves for Yisrael by mm -hmm. cursing them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and it, it continues like when you know when they go to jericho it's like uh we heard what you guys do we're super scared so <laughs> but um yeah it'll be interesting to get into the next few chapters so all right all righty i guess we're done so thank you everybody for joining us for another episode of anti-religious scripture study and we'll be back again next saturday with another episode and, so, and Shabbat Shalom and the earth is flat. Shabbat Shalom, the earth is flat, and have a restful day.